It's all about bucks, mature whitetail bucks, and the hopeful dream of outwitting a good deer into effective range of a hunter. When it comes to hunting big bucks, there's a fine line that separates success from failure. The window of opportunity for seeing a glimpse of a big whitetail is small. Therefore, a hunter must be prepared for that opportune time frame. It's during the rut that a mature whitetail senses are overridden with a desire to breed. So a hunter must take advantage of this phase of the season. This active part of the season is not always predictable because many years the peak of the activity is affected by the moon phase and lots of big deer do their courting during low light conditions or after legal hunting hours. The 1999 season was an exception. It was a year when the moon phase was right for daytime rutting activity. When a new moon occurs during the last week of October, most of the central and northern regions will have two major rutting periods. A bonus rut occurs late in October, then the other peaks around the normal period between November 10th and 20th. It's during and between these periods that bucks are vulnerable. When bucks are roaming, a hunter can up his odds with deer scents. Plus, before and during the lull between the rutting periods, rattling and calling opportunities are excellent. Before and after the breeding season, hunters are forced to concentrate their efforts around food sources. The night and hail team started their season in mid-September, hunting food plots. Then the deer's habits changed to mast crops, and the boys followed the signs to success. The season was good to our team. It was another year of observing whitetails and learning more about their habits. It was a year blessed with some new friendships, like a late December muzzleloader hunt with Hank Williams Jr., an avid whitetail hunter. All in all, we hunted north, south, east, and west with our Matthews bows, night muzzleloaders, and modern firearms to capture on video what we remember as a visible rut. was great. <laughs> Folks, welcome to Night and Hail's sixth edition of Whitetail Hunting. You know what? We've got a special guest here today, and I don't think he needs any introduction, but it's Mr. Hank Williams, Jr., and he's up here really not to play this guitar, although that's a special treat for us. He's Whitetail Hunting in the Kentucky's 
late season muzzle loading right here at Whitetail Creek Outfitters. Mm -hmm. And you know what? If old Hank kills him a buck, it'll just about complete our video. And they tell me there's some weather coming in. Harold, what do you think's gonna happen this weather? Rain and well needed rain. Thunderstorms, high winds. Ooh me. Mississippi Sorry about River's that, dry ain't it? Thunderstorms <laughs> and high wind. <laughs> That's ain't that rough. something? Well, to have a chance to get to hunt with you guys, I think I'd even sit up there in the in the rain. Because I've heard a lot about this place. I live not too far from here. And of course, started using y'all's calls a long time ago before y'all started selling a lot of stuff. And you know when, way yeah, back. Absolutely. Yeah, that was two weeks ago. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm, uh, I'm really looking forward to it. I've never... Uh, done one of these hunting videos, and I said, now, who's the very best folk? Well, there's only one. Oh, right and man. Hand. Well, I appreciate <laughs> that, Hank. That's great. I appreciate that. Hank, you are a country music legend, but most people don't realize just how much hunting you do, don't you? Yeah, I love it. I really do. I mean, that's all I'm reading on the bus or the plane. It's a family tradition with us. My daddy loved squirrel hunting, bird hunting, fishing. Uh... My grandfather, who was my father figure, took me hunting all the time, and that, that's all I've done. I mean, I started coming up here to the Kentucky Lake, land between the lakes area, when I was 14 years old. That's and where I, your best memories are. Yes, sir, and I'm still here. Hank, you do a lot of stuff with your family and your friends, and that's what hunting's all about, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Yeah, it really is. You know, we have traveled to uh, Oklahoma, mm -hmm. Colorado, Nebraska, mm -hmm. Iowa, Tennessee, Kentucky, and... Sounds like my tour schedule. <laughs> yeah, that's a, we're on the same schedule. I know we are. I promise are. you, but... That's why this is special. We've had... It's been an awesome year. It's been a year when the weather's cooperated, and we have seen a visible rut, and we have seen bucks chasing does in every area that we've hunted. Boy, and we have learned it. some stuff, that and it has it. been a fantastic year. You're right, Chuck, and when you talk about a visible rut, what you're talking about actually is we got to witness a rut as it unfolded during the daylight hours. And that was everywhere we went. Uh, and that let us use some great new products because, of course, and, and the scent, most of all. Absolutely. Folks, thanks for joining us for this year's video. It's called The Visible Rut. And while Hank is sitting here teaching us old country boys how we can survive, <laughs> y'all sit back and enjoy the 1999 Night and Hail Ultimate Season. Oh, I'm ready. Play a song. I know a perfect <laughs> song. Dig a K and a E, a N and a T, a U and a C K Y. That yeah. spells Kentucky. And it means paradise. Yeah. You take a chicken and kill it and throw it in a skillet and fry it a golden brown. And that's southern cooking. The very best around. Now I don't cover much when you look on the map. But I learned all my geography on my granddaddy's lap. Take a K and a E and a N and a T and a U and a C K Y. That spells Kentucky, and it means paradise. Hot Lake now. Oh, yeah, man. <laughs> now let's get with it. Now tell me something, Harold. Why have you brought me all the way down here? What's so good about this spot? I want to tell you something, David. It's three things I really like here. One of them is this hollow coming from these big fields. Okay. This hollow coming with these thickets. Okay. And this big white oak acorn tree right here is loaded with white oak, and I guarantee they're falling, and the deer are eating them. I couldn't believe it. Well, I, I know they've back. scattered. There's no deer in the fields now. And you know what? Every white oak tree is not the same. They like the taste of this white oak tree because it's thousands of white oak trees out here in these woods, and they like this one for some reason, the reason because it's more sign on it. Let's go look at all the signs. My land, Harold, look at the tracks. Look at the acorns. Look here. Just look at the acorns on the ground. Good. You know, I ain't seen this many acorns in three or four years. Look Let me here. tell you something. Look in this old road, too. You know, a deer likes He can just pick down there and pick them up. Look here. Goodness. Just look. Boy, this is a... I didn't realize a white oak was loaded like this. And you know, not every white oak's got them, but this one right here is loaded. Man, you have... I believe I, this is one of the spots I was telling you about. Uh-huh. I tell you what, you'll like this spot. But I'm going to tell you, Dave, there's lots of deer coming back here. It's a natural place for them to come back and they've got uh, something to eat. You know, they like, they've had 
everything except acorns here lately. And these acorns, you know, fall all at once. All right, we got acorns, we got the food right here. Let's find a spot, because they're gonna come right up this draw, probably right over that one. It's a natural swag. Let's look at it, find a tree I can't believe all the tracks that are here, Colonel. This is something. These deer are here. Okay, where's the stand? Where are we gonna put it? All right. Yeah, gotta find I'm, gonna, I'm gonna let you pick the stand, because I, I don't, if, you, if no deer shows up and you get in the stand, you don't see nothing, you blame okay, me for Okay, there's not a cedar here, so I've gotta go with something that's got cover. I'm I, going to that maple right there. All right. I, that I maple's knew, got the I knew cover. if it wasn't a cedar, it'd be a maple, because you like those two. All right, and I'm gonna dash, tell you I'll now. tell you what, you can hide in the maple tree. You still got some leaves on the tree, too. That's Absolutely, good. and I want to be about 25 yards off the trail. I believe they're gonna come through here and up and down this road, and I want to be able to shoot the road. Let's go get the stand. All right. Well, sometimes teamwork is a big plus to fine-tuning the area you bow hunt. Harold and David are on to a hot pattern. The first white oak acorns are falling, and whitetails love the sweet taste of them. David Stanside is in a saddle along this long ridge, an excellent travel route for deer frequenting this area. David settles into his Terra Elite with his Matthews bow, and it's not long until he has some deer feeding right under his stand. The height of his stand and using the cover of this big maple tree keeps him hidden. Plus his shadow branch mossy oak is a perfect pattern to help him blend into the surroundings. Out of nowhere, a big buck appears at about 80 yards. The buck is feeding slowly through the trees, picking up the scattered acorns from the ground. This is a crucial time when a bow hunter has to keep his eye on the buck and also watch for other deer that might pick him off.
As the buck feeds behind a tree, David makes his move. Last place I saw him standing, it was about 100 yards up there. We're going to start right there training. Come on, I don't know where that was. Right along in here. Yeah, you understand. Right here's where I last saw him. Look here. Here's the blood. That's obvious. He crossed this log right here. Going right straight down this logging road. Still getting blood right here. He's going straight down his heel. God, there's some kind of he is. He's down at the bottom. I see something white. I can't tell whether he's dead or not. Yes! If I had any idea that deer was that big, I'd never been able to draw on him. Gee, look at that. 11 corner. 12, 13, 14, asked you. Good golly, Miss Molly. Can you believe that, that deer? Holy Michael Andy. I cannot believe that. I'm sure glad looking down on that deer. I had no idea what size he was. I'd have never even got as close as he did. And I still shot him high up in the back, just as I thought. Come out on the other side. Lord have mercy, what a deer. Well, quick scenario. For the last week and a half, we've been hunting green fields. Acorns are beginning to fall, the white oaks, we got abundance of them this time. We found the sweet little acorn that these deer like to eat in a clean spot up there. Decided to put the stands up there this morning, hunting under acorn trees. The does you know are gonna come there. When the does come, you never know what's gonna show up. We're just beginning to start the rut in a big way. Lots of rubs, lots of scrapes around. They're active. Anytime you find the does, you're gonna find the bucks. My lands, what a deer. What kind of place you found? Well, I want you to look at this timber harvest down through here. I won't call it a clear cut, but it's pretty close. Yes, and they right. windrowed all this timber. Well, all the way down through here for about 200 yards, they windrowed this timber, except uh -huh. for this one spot right here. I like yeah. that. That's grown up out there, too. That is about a two to three year old cut. You got a lot of stuff coming out. Look at the yeah. trail coming right through here. Man, look at here where have they have been walking. That looks good. Now see these deer are coming right through this old cut, browsing out here on briars and all yeah. kinds of little bushes. Yeah, I see them old sugar trees. They like them sugar trees. They're sucker too. stumps, yeah. all the stumps. Yeah. And they're going right down to that pond down yonder. Uh-huh. Well no, this is this is this is what I got now. And the sign looks pretty doggone good. I see a good sign right there and look at that tree right yonder been rubbed. That means there's some bucks coming through here, bud. I'll tell you what it means for me. I'm going to hunt your place, not mine. <laughs> well, <laughs> I, I can understand. Well, i tell you what. Since we're going to hunt my place, I have found a cedar tree right there that we're going to get into. Of course, you probably figured out. I knew it. I guarantee I knew it would be a cedar tree. Well, there's two reasons why I got that cedar tree. First of all, I like a cedar. Second of all, we can cover up with night and hail cedar scent. And third of all, it's not more than 20 yards off this little path coming right through this funnel right here. And that's now, designed for you, brother. I'll tell you what, I like all three of them. I like a short shot, and I like a cedar tree, and I like that scent. Well, let me tell you what. It's going to be wind blowing tomorrow. Let's get out of here. We'll come back and put the stands right up. Right in the middle of the day. Right in the middle of the day. David wanted to make sure Harold's stand was close to those trails. Now, surely he doesn't think old Harold would miss one it looks like he would have a little more confidence in his hunting partner. Well, late that next day, the boys are settled into their big cedar, and it's that late evening magic when the air starts to cool and deer begin to move. When hunting during the early season, 
Many times the last hour of the day is the most productive, but it's a good idea to take a stand early so things can settle down if you happen to bust a deer going to your stand. This doe seems a little nervous, and it's not long till Harold finds out why. A couple of bucks are having some early hormonal effects. Many people don't realize how effective deer calling can be during the first part of the season. Deer are curious animals and much more social than we sometimes realize. A few soft grunts can easily persuade a buck right into bow range. This buck was completely convinced another buck was close by. See all them other bucks join in down there, that buck. Did you hear that crash? I heard a deer crash down there. Hey, yonder he is right there. Right I know that deer wasn't far. I heard him fall. This is where we heard him fall, too. He's days of him. That's a good. My God. That's a good deer. Look how big that deer is body wise. Man, that deer feels just 200 pounds. 
goodness. Whitetails go through different phases each season. Let's join Walter and Chuck for a breakdown of these phases. You know, Chuck, we live in the central part of the United States, but are fortunate to hunt all over the country. Uh, what do you think the uh, keys are to be successful in, in hunting in all these other areas? No doubt the number one key is figuring out wherever you go, what transition the deer are in. If you, if you sit down and look at it, you've got about five different transitions that deer go through. They're all food source related, which is mm -hmm. the key to hunting. But let's look at the first transition. Bucks coming out of velvet, their horns are hardening. They're gonna stay in bachelor groups for five days to two weeks, you know, depending on weather and available food source. To hunt those deer, scouting is the key. You know, you like to use a lot of different tree stands. You like to scout hard, and you like to use a lot of different tree stands. Well, and I like to get those stands up early, especially it's going to be, basically it's going to be agriculture at the first part of the season, and there's some trails there that those deer are really going to be using. I like to set two or three different stands up and try to use the wind to my advantage, and whichever one is working with the wind, and that's what I'm going to sit in. Well, in July and August, you're out there setting stands exactly. up. And another key is to set different wind position stands up, set you south, north, east, west. You know, if a hunter's gonna be successful these, this day and time, he's gotta use several different stands. But focus on food sources. Like you said, there are no mass crops available, agricultural fields, scout hard, and be a little bit more portable. You know, speaking of being portable, Chuck, this next phase is one that you really have to be portable in because those bucks, it's a lull time period for them. It's, it's before the rut. And, and they go nocturnal and you just can't hardly find them. You're exactly right. The only bonus to that period is that that's the first acorns are beginning to fall during that time. And in our area, in a lot of areas, white oaks are starting to fall and that is a preferred acorn to bucks because it's sweeter. So if a guy can find those acorns, he's in business. The only difference is you've got to be portable. You know, I'm going to leave my fixed position stands. Right. I love to hunt out of a climbing stand because you may be sitting in, on one hill hunting one acorn tree and look over there and see bucks using another acorn tree. You need to be able to move to that spot. So that's a great option during that period. You know, another thing is if it happens to be a drought, a, another great place to be is around a pond or a water source. No doubt. It's hot and dry during that time of year. Once again, the freshest available food source and exactly. the quietest approach to your stand. Well, this next phase is without a doubt my favorite. The bucks are patternable, there's a lot of sign, they're doing a lot of roaming, and it's a great time to try calling. Yeah, even a dummy like me can stumble on a deer <laughs> during this period. But you know, once again, you're looking at food source and the freshest sign around it, you know. Bucks are traveling. You want to hunt scrape lines and rub lines that are beginning to show up. This is what everybody calls a pre-rut. And these scrape and rub lines, they're going to be leading to or they're going to be around where the does are because those bucks are traveling to those areas hoping to catch a doe that's coming into estrus early. And that's why that food source is so very important because that's where those does are going to be. That's right, and that's why calling is good around there because he relates that to something that's going early. He's out, he is waiting for a doe to come in. So you like to call during that time of the year. Exactly, my favorite time of the year to call. And now we have the rut the most exciting time of the deer season, but this is when the bucks are most unpredictable. There's no doubt because things are happening. You know, they're, they're in a panic state. They're chasing does, they're going wild. The key here, find the freshest doe sign. The bucks will be there. Find the does and the bucks will be there. Look for the freshest droppings. Whatever the available food source is, preferred food source is where you want to be. Calling can still come in there because if you see a buck traveling through an area, you can grunt to him, get him to think that there's a doe over there, a buck's chasing right. a doe around, he'll come to you. One key, I think, is to be very observant during this time. Get in an area where you can see and you can see stuff's going on. I never go anywhere without these bushnells hanging around my neck because I can look and see what's going on. If I need to make a move, I'll move. That's exactly when you want to have that old man climbing stand on your back because I've seen Time after time, you need to move 50, 60 yards to be successful. Exactly, and pay attention to the routes that does use, the bucks will be following. That's right. Now we're to the post-rut phase, or a lot of people call it the secondary rut. 
tough time of the year to hunt. Weather's changed, getting colder. Uh, seems like there's less deer out, and obviously there is. Some of them have been harvested. What do you do to hunt that phase? Go back to the areas that had rut sign in it and find the rut sign that is opening back up. Find the thickest available areas, green briar thickets, honeysuckle thickets. The advantage you have right here is that deer, you can narrow the deer down to the thicker area because you mentioned the cold weather has killed off a lot of the foliage, the thick stuff. They're gonna yard up in areas that are thick. A lot of your subordinate bucks are just trying to survive, yet some of the biggest bucks are out there roaming, looking for those few does that are available. So, great options. It is also a great time to drive deer. Oh man, it's our favorite time and it's a technique that we use a lot. You know where the deer are, pre-planned with maps and wind direction and it works awesome. It is fun. <laughs>